Welcome back. Britain and other members of the contact group, which includes major European countries, Russia and the United States, say they'll impose economic sanctions on Yugoslavia if the country's president, Slobodan Milosevic, doesn't do more to bring peace to the disputed province of Kosovo. But the group's put off the threat of definite action for at least four weeks, even though there's recently been an escalation of violence in the area. And claims by the Serbian authorities that their special forces police are withdrawing from Kosovo, as requested by the contact group, appear unfounded. Max Stahl, one of Channel 4 News' team which was, who was attacked by Serb extremists two weeks ago, is the only journalist to have experienced life amid ethnic Albanians who are living under siege. For three weeks in the central Drenica region of Kosovo, some 90 Albanian villages had been under siege from Serbian special police forces. The Serbs had been firing into the villages, sowing terror. The Albanians are desperate to stay, even under fire. But at any moment, panic is triggered by rumors of a Serbian advance. The villagers have reason to be afraid. Three weeks ago, the Serb offensive began in a nearby village of Prekas. Tank shells ripped it apart. Today, it's a ghost town. The graves of 52 people, including 13 children, are guarded by Serbian guns. Broja, too, has been hit. The clinic, the school and the buses appear to have been the main targets. But the Serbs stopped on the edge of the village, keeping these Albanians in terror of a final attack. Around 100 people were taken hostage in this house within Serbian lines, including 12-year-old Spend. His father slipped in during the night to rescue him after two weeks, just hours before I spoke to them. Two old women in Spend's family were shot by snipers as they milked their cows. In this crisis meeting, the men are discussing what to do in the face of Serbian tactics they believe are designed to empty the Albanian villages. Their families have already fled. They've been sent to a village further away from the Serbian lines. Already up to 20,000 people have been displaced. They found shelter in schools and private houses, often fleeing Serbian attacks by sleeping in the woods. Some children have died. Armed Albanians, members of Kosovo's Liberation Army, have killed, according to Serbian figures, eight police in the last year. But now the massive Serbian response has left the villages with little but a suicidal choice to support what was previously a splinter group. The confrontation between villagers armed largely with forks and heavily armed Serbian police can have only one outcome. For the villagers, it was the hope of strong action from the Six Nations contact group that was preventing a widespread massacre. Today, far from withdrawing, these Serbian forces are digging in with heavy guns.